My name is Mark and I'm from Oika. My question for you in this video is, can you make a bowl of foamy matcha without a whisk? The answer to that is kinda. <laughs> Honestly, the whisks do the best job, which is why they're called matcha whisk, cha sen. But look, you're traveling, you're abroad, you're at the airport and you need your matcha. You forgot to bring it to work or your cha sen got eaten by a dog. Whatever happened, happened. And are you really going to let that stop you from enjoying your morning cup of matcha? Well, the answer to that is probably not, especially after watching this video. So I'm going to be giving you two different methods for whisking your matcha up in order to drink it and have a nice foamy approximation of what you would get if you had a proper whisk with you. And by the way, if you like matcha videos, go ahead and hit subscribe because Oika does matcha videos. Who would have thought? First up, what exactly is a cha sen and why does it whisk matcha so well? The cha sen comes from a small town in Japan called Ikoma. And in that town, they take little segments of bamboo and by hand split them into all of these little needles called tines. Now the number of these needles can vary. The more you have, the easier it is to froth up your matcha. Although that's a bit of a generalization, I will say that technically speaking, you don't actually need to whisk your matcha in order to drink it. In fact, there's an entire school of matcha making ceremony in Japan that doesn't really whisk it. They don't really risk it by whisking it. The point is you don't actually have to whisk your matcha. You can drink it just by adding water into the powder and incorporating it with a fork. But personally, I like the whisking. The aerating of the matcha makes it taste smoother. It lowers the intensity of the bitterness and astringency if there is any in your matcha. And of course, it looks really good for social media. So yeah, there's that. But the point here is the bar is low. You don't have to have a world-class foamy bowl of matcha to enjoy it. You can have it however you have it. So keep the cortisol levels down. The whole point of matcha is to de-stress and enjoy your bowl. So if you don't get a perfect matcha foam on it, it's completely uh, fine. But with that said, let's get into actually making a bowl of matcha using alternative techniques to this tool, which frankly does work very well. Now there are multiple ways to make matcha without using a cha sen, but the two tools that we'll be using today are a standard protein shaker from my local protein place here in the Philippines where I'm visiting right now, and also one of these, which is your typical um, coffee milk frothing hear it? Devices. So both of these will work pretty well. In fact, this one does a very good job, but we're going to start with the protein shaker. And I don't know if the mic is picking it up, but outside there seems to be some birthday party going on. It sounds really fun. All right. So here's what you do. It's very simple. First, we're going to take a protein shaker. Then we will take our matcha, ideally fresh ground if you have access to it. Link below for Oika. We operate one of the only stone mills outside of Japan in the world that grinds matcha fresh right in the United States. All right, CTA aside, let's get into this. So we're gonna put in two grams of our matcha powder into our shaker. If you don't have a scale that's completely fine, two grams is about four almond sized little scoops like this. So we'll put it into our shaker. Next, we're going to add hot not boiling water, all right? We don't wanna scold the tea, we just want it to be a little warmer than what's comfortable to hold. We can see the matcha is down there. As far as the amount of water, we don't want too much. We want enough that you can drink your matcha in about three sips. The biggest mistake I see with beginners when they're making matcha and they're having a hard time getting it to foam, even when they use a proper tea whisk, is they have way too little matcha and way too much water. If you have too much water, it's never gonna foam up, especially if you're using alternative whisking techniques. We have it in our container. If you have a shaking ball in there for your protein powder, that works too. And I bet you guys can guess the next step. All right, that should be good. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera and we'll pour it into a bowl and see what it looks like. Okay, let's pour it into the bowl. And there we have it. Now, is that perfectly whisked? Is it extremely foamy? No, not really, but it's good enough, which is the point of this video. Okay, so there we go. We have our bowl of matcha. Like I said, good enough. 
shaker is done, we'll put that aside and we're gonna move on to the blending stick. These things are super cheap. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. They're good for milk. If you make matcha lattes, these can make it a little bit more pleasant. Now the steps are pretty much the same as far as the ratio of water to tea. So let's go ahead and make it in this glass. I'm going to use a sifter to sift my matcha into the glass. You don't need to do that, you can skip it. But just like adding cocoa powder to water, if you sift this, it helps it incorporate a little bit more and takes a little bit less uh, whisking or stirring. So again, we'll do the same exact thing. Four almond sized scoops, two grams of matcha powder. And now we'll sift it in. Made a little bit of a mess. Now we'll add our water and just like before, less is more. If you add too much water, it gets really difficult to get this to foam up properly. So lean on the conservative side. Stick goes in. So I start at the bottom to make sure that the matcha is incorporated into the water. And then I slowly move the needle up. So it's just frothing the top layer, which incorporates the air into it. Okay, there we go. Now you can already see that it has a pretty good crema on top. See that line of lighter color? All right, let's move the camera again and we'll pour it in and get the foam into. There we go. Again, we have a nice thin layer of foam on top. Not perfect, but again, good enough. And since I was fiddling with the camera, the crema actually evened out even more. Let me see, I'm gonna lift the whole camera. Yeah. Simple, well incorporated. What I really like about these frothers is they do a pretty good job of breaking up any of the clumps of matcha so you get a smoother infusion. So yeah, overall you can make a bowl of matcha and have it foamy enough to enjoy using things other than the traditional cha sen matcha whisk. We talked about protein shakers, we talked about milk frothers. You can even use an egg beater. It doesn't really work super well, but you technically can. And uh, mason jars are an old standby. The truth is you shouldn't let not having the right tools stop you from drinking matcha. That includes not just the cha sen, the tea whisk, but also having a bowl. You probably don't have a traditional matcha bowl, especially if you're new to matcha, and that's totally fine. You don't really need one. In fact, this thermos that I use for hot water, you can also just use for your matcha. You can use a standard glass cup. In the history of drinking matcha, really expensive foreign bowls were used from China and Korea that were imported into Japan. They were extremely expensive. And tea monks, such as the famous Sen no Rikyu and others, realized that we needed to make matcha more approachable, more humble and they actually started taking tea bowls not expensive from overseas not art pieces but regular tea bowls from their kitchen and brought them into the tea room this idea of wabi-sabi this imperfect use of non-perfect tools is part of the blood of matcha using tools that are humble that have simple beginnings basically what you have on hand in fact it wouldn't surprise me that if in the future we see traditional matcha being made with plastic tools and tools that are more profane rather than sacred this is part of the blood of matcha using what's on hand i don't want to get too deep into the philosophy of matcha this is more about just being okay with the fact that you don't need to have fancy tools you don't need to have fancy bowls. You can enjoy matcha with what you have on hand, and that is the spirit of matcha. Yes, these bowls and these whisks make it a little more special when you have a bowl of matcha, but the truth is, with matcha, every moment is special. And when you drink a bowl of matcha, no matter where in the world you are, or what time it is, or who your guests are, it's a moment in time that will never repeat. Ichigo Ichie. One meeting, one chance. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe for other matcha videos, matcha made accessible. That is the mission of Obika. I appreciate all of your feedback and all of the subscribers. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys next time. We have a video every week and a short, a YouTube short, that's matcha themed every day. I wanna get outside and join that party. I bet they have lechon. I bet they have really good Filipino cuisine. So I'm gonna go do that. Uh, and maybe I'll bring them a bowl of matcha myself. See you guys next time. Thanks so much.